Welcome back. We're going to spend a lot of this semester talking about the importance of meaning in shaping our memories. But let's think for a moment about the role of meaning in short-term memory. Is there any influence there? Well, there's a great study on the role of semantic or meaning in short-term memory. Uh, actually, the words here are semantic coding, and I should go back and take a step and say what coding means um, is how information is represented. Is it represented in your visual system, or do you store it in your auditory system, or your motor system? That's what coding means. Okay. So, evidence for semantic coding in short-term memory. Here's the study. Repeatedly, you are given a list of three words. So, let's say the first list is banana, peach, apple. And you're given the three words, banana, peach, apple, and it's sort of like the Peterson and Peterson effect. You have to count backwards for 15 seconds, so there's no rehearsal. So, banana, peach, apple, um, you know, 100, 99, 98, blah, 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 for 15 seconds. And then I have to tell you what the words were. Um, banana, peach, apple, I can do that. But if I keep going, proactive interference is going to build up. So the second list, uh, which is plum, apricot, lime, uh, plum, apricot, lime, um, 50, 49, 48, blah, 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 15 seconds go by, la, 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 plum, apple, lime. Okay. If I keep going at that rate, eventually, and if I actually count backwards for 15 minutes instead of the 15 seconds instead of cheating as I just did, what you'll find is in the bottom graph is memory drops. Okay, here's the key manipulation. If on the last trial you switch topics or the meaning of the stimuli, in the example, if I stick with the same meaning, the same meaningful category of stimuli, say fruit, then proactive interference is going to mean that my memory for each list is going to drop and drop and drop. Okay? But if I start off with one category, in this case it is um, professions, and then I'm going along, my proactive interference is, is, is impacting my ability to remember, and then the experimenters give me a list of words from a different topic. Say I go to fruit. There is, remember, release from proactive interference. Boom. All, the, all of a sudden, my performance goes back up. So release of proactive interference tells you that meaning is impacting short-term memory in some way. So meaning, working memory. Remember that episodic buffer that Badley had to propose so you could connect short-term memory and long-term memory so that they could both be influenced by memory. Okay, so short-term memory has semantic coding, right? It's understood, it's represented in terms of meaning. Now I want you to participate in a study. It's a very simple study um, from Jacqueline Sachs back in, in 67. I'm going to read you a story. And what I want to find out is your long-term memory for that story is it based on the meaning of the story or the exact words? Now, all of you who've had those fights with family members and friends and loved ones where the fight includes the words, no, you said blah, 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 blah. Okay. <laughs> you're getting, when you make that argument, no, you said that, da, 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 da. You're, you're getting right at this issue. What do people remember from what you said? Do they remember their interpretation of the meaning of what you said, or do they remember the words themselves? Let's find out. So I'm going to read you a story, and then uh, I'm going to ask you a question. Okay? So here goes. Sit back, enjoy. Here's the story. While most gardeners enjoy tulips, it is unlikely that tulips would be valued as highly today as they were in Holland during the 17th century. For some reason, tulips became very popular at this time. The tulip was first brought into Europe from Turkey. In 1551, the Viennese ambassador to Turkey wrote of seeing these plants. Years later, in 1562, a cargo of tulip bulbs was sent to Antwerp. The flower then spread through Holland from there. 
At first, only the rich cultivated and traded in tulips. Eventually, most of Holland was involved in the matter. Almost everybody tried to do, outdo their neighbors, both in rare colors and prices paid for bulbs. A price of 6,000 florin was paid for one Semper Augustus bulb in 1636. At that time, enough money to buy a house and grounds. Soon everyone in Holland was working in the tulip trade and ordinary businesses were being neglected. People who had been away from Holland and returned during the craze made mistakes. A sailor is said to have mistaken a tulip bulb, a tulip bulb worth several thousand florin as an onion and cut it up and ate it with his herring. Okay, so that's a story about tulips. Kind of a long story, but you know, okay. Here's the question. Which of these statements that appears in the next slide actually appeared in the story I told you? What were the exact words that I used? Go ahead and pick. It's hard, isn't it? Because the sentences essentially mean the same thing, but the words are different, right? We can express the same meaning with different words. So what Sachs found is that the, our memory for the words that someone uses is pretty bad. But our memory for the meaning of the story or the statement is actually pretty good. So long-term memory is based in meaning. Not the words, but the meaning that you interpret from those words. Now, this is really important. It explains how two people can experience the same conversation in different ways. I know what I intended to communicate to you, but I don't know what you really understood from what I said. What you understand from what I said determines your memory for what I said, right? So there can be a mismatch between what you understood and what I intended to express. So we can argue about it, but it's kind of silly because no one has great memory for the particular words that they use to convey some meaningful statement. It's the meaning that matters much more than the words. There are a few people who have different sort of memory systems, but by large, by and large, the vast majority of people, long-term memory is based on meaning. Ooh, come back and we're going to talk about amnesia. Very cool.